Um, we start with, uh, with the partnership within uh, all the GTFCC and, and what has happened since the last meeting. Well, uh, the, the last meeting was in 27-28 uh, in, uh, of February here in, in Fondation Marieu, the WASH working group. After that, we had the, the surveillance, which is divided into two working groups, laboratory and epidemiology, also met here in, in, in April. And then we had the, the plenary GTFCC meeting, which is the, the, the meeting that we have every year in June and is expected to happen in, in June 2019, as Dominic said. We had a meeting uh, that wasn't technically a working group meeting, but it was a technical meeting on, on a research agenda. It wasn't hosted by, by Fondation Mario, but it was hosted by, by the Wellcome Trust in, in London in July. And then we had, uh, towards the end of the year, the case management working group also here, and the, the OCV working group in, in December. And uh, overall, GTFCC achievements across all these working groups, uh, this is a, is a small list. Um, of, of the main, uh, main technical outcomes of, of the different working groups. Uh, the first one is uh, what will be discussed, especially during this working group uh, meeting and also the next one in the surveillance working group uh, approaching the GTFCC meeting in, in June is the color elimination framework. I think that all of you should have received the, this document, which is uh, a guidance to countries on how to develop the national cholera control plans. We'll, we'll have presentations this afternoon about this and how we support countries from going to the roadmap, the, the nice uh, end cholera by 2030, which is the strategy, to an operational document that actually um, implements, implements this strategy at, at country level. And that's why we're very pleased to have a lot of the representatives from the countries because it's with their feedback that we have to tailor this, this document uh, for, to achieve cholera elimination. Uh, Dominique mentioned la mayonnaise, and I, <laughs> I think the, the, the cholera elimination framework we also call the cookbook, because it's really be, um, putting together all the recipes on how to achieve, uh, how to achieve la mayonnaise. Um, uh, we'll also be accompanied by uh, more technical documents, uh, an offer of service, which also uh, details what the GTFCC partners can offer uh, to countries in supporting them in, in building these plans. Um, and also, uh, this is more for the GTFCC rather than for the countries, but is how the GTFCC group can uh, uh, support reviewing this document and, uh, and uh, let's say, certifying the color elimination um, progress. Um, Another major achievement in the past year has been the finalization of the cholera investment case. Um, it also very much linked to uh, the advocacy at global level and with the donors, but also as a tool for the countries, for them to estimate how much it will cost in each of them to, to achieve the cholera elimination. All the countries are different, and even within the countries, as, as Dominique was saying, there are extreme differences between hotspots. So some may be better off than others, and not all of them have the same needs in terms of wash or CV, et cetera. So it's, it's, a complex, uh, it's a complex exercise budgeting these plans, and uh, there's going to be discussions about this um, this afternoon by, by Guy Hutton, and also an, ex um, an example of the uh, budgeting tool that uh, that Guy and the team have been uh, developing for countries, if you're interested. That is, a, in, is an optional session that we have set for, for countries especially and, and, and partners um, after the closure of day one. Then we had uh, support on the research uh, agenda from DFID and there was a call for proposals that went across all working groups and uh, I hope and I'm sure that many of you um, in this room have, have applied to that call for proposals. And uh, last but not least, the, the revision of the um, yellow book. We had this uh, yellow book that was the how to uh, evaluate a cholera outbreak response, which was, I think, 2004. Um, and it was in badly in need of an update. And the team coordinated by, by Kate and, and Cesco here have um, with the support of all the GTFCC, including the WASH working group, have completed the, the revision. You have uh, the first, uh, how can we say, beta version of the booklet. 
is not the official version yet. It's just been printed as a, as a preview um, sitting on, on your desks. And it's a very exciting achievement. Linked to the, to, the, um, to the yellow book, we're also developing an online tool. It's, it's, it will be in a page, web page, that is for now also a pilot page. It's called coleraoutbreak.org. But most importantly, um, we are also developing an application, a tool for the smartphones, um, where uh, a lot of this, the, yellow, the tools that are presented in the annex of the yellow book will be um, interactive for, for people in the field. And um, on this note, since this is in development, um, we are asking your feedback um, on what exactly, from the yellow book paper version, you would like to see in, um, in, uh, translated in an app in terms of calculating, for example, uh, chlorine solutions, um, antibiotic regimens, uh, treatment regimens, etc. What exactly would you like to see in those tools? And you know how sometimes we have um, the possibility have, of having online surveys where everybody will say what we, what we want um, and, and it will be automatically calculated. Well, we're not doing that. <laughs> but we're going <laughs> to... We're gonna put we're gonna put a box with suggestions at the end of the room, and you're welcome to if you revise your, the yellow book, uh, indicating what exactly you think will be will be the uh, a good tool to to transform into an app. Um, the this was the, the overall achievements. And then uh, briefly uh, the, the achievements by working group. Uh, we'll go very quickly. Um, uh, and um, um, because, yeah, we want to then stop looking at the, the year back but focus on the future. Anyway, in the past year, uh, we have been working on the development of the WASH package within the WASH working group to support the WASH pillar of the, of the National Cholera Control Framework. And, of course, working on both the interventions that would go under axis one, this outbreak response axis, and the most important axis two, which is the multi-sector cholera control in, in hotspots. And including in this package, we also have been working on how to combine the WASH and the, and the OCV interventions in what we call the WASH and OCV package. <laughs> Um, we have finalized the, the technical guidance on uh, uh, IPC uh, in CTC in collaboration with the case management working group. Supported uh, the, um, the WASH working group has supported the environmental uh, surveillance note also in collaboration with the, with the epidemiology and laboratory working group. Um, there's been a support, an active support uh, by the WASH working group uh, represented by, by Monica. Um, with reviewing the GTFCC OCV request uh, to ensure that uh, um, the WASH and the OCV are, are connected, of course, in collaboration with the OCV working group. Um, there's been uh, working on following the research proposal uh, and the call for, for RFP, the RFP. Um, there's been working work going on, on the research priorities that the WASH working group would like to, to achieve, and six areas were identified. And then the, the WASH working group has supported with uh, an HR roster of WASH experts that have been deployed in, in several countries. There's just a few examples down there. The surveillance and, and um, part of the, uh, the, the epidemiology working group, which is part of the overall surveillance working group, have been working on refining the methodology for hotspot identification. And this is a collaboration with the WASH working group and will be a central activity this afternoon um, we know that to define uh, cholera risk, if you can look at the epidemiological data, but then there is also a lot of factors that define the risk. And um, um, I have one minute, but my, my boss to, <laughs> for once spoke more than me. So, <laughs> 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 and um, uh, so this afternoon. Uh, a group working group, uh, a group work will look at the wash factors that should be included in this hotspot identification. They will also feed into the into the NCP framework, uh, guiding countries on how actually what factors should be considered to identify hotspots. Has been working on uh, the different case reporting tools, etc., as part of the yellow book. 
um, work, ongoing work on uh, building repositories for surveillance data and also whole genome sequencing data, and also um, they are being involved in the research agenda. Um, the laboratory working group um, has worked on, um, on a package of interventions to support the laboratory component of the NCP, and I will not go too much in detail. Um, the case management uh, um, has uh, produced the, the technical note on news on, on, on antibiotics, on cholera and, and um, malnutrition. Uh, Mm, the collaboration with, uh, with the WASH Working Group for the CTC took, um, note. They have also adapted the um, technical note on organization of cholera care, and they are now focusing on priorities with treatment, uh, uh, cholera treatment of children with uh, severe acute malnutrition and uh, uh, pregnant women with cholera. The OCV Working Group um, has been already mentioned. Uh, by, by Dominique. The major thing is that Gavi has renewed the support to OCV until 2025 or, or 26. Um, has been providing continuous oversight on OCV use in countries and on the supply of uh, man management of the supply. Uh, working on the OCV demand forecast. Integration within OCV and, and WASH, as we were saying, and uh, the research uh, for, for what is, it is concerned. Um, last slide, or almost last slide, um, the country and partner engagement has been already covered by, by Dominique. Uh, since the launch of the roadmap in 2017, we've seen a, an, an amazing and impressive engagement of all the, the, the GTFCC partners to support countries in, con in controlling cholera and an engagement of, of the countries uh, themselves. Uh, first of all, in, in May 2018, Zambia and Haiti uh, promoted the, the resolution on cholera prevention and, and control. Um, there's, there's impressive engagement um, on developing the national cholera elimination plans by a few of, 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 uh, of the countries, most of the countries below, and, and I'm sure I'm forgetting many more. Um, there's been uh, efforts by the GTFCC for multi-sector country support. Increased linkages with the platforms, uh, Wicaro, Isaro, and, and the MENA platforms. GTFCC partners directly involved with the GTFCC hat. <laughs> One of them is, is sitting there, John, working with the CDC, but uh, under the broad umbrella of the GTFCC in Kenya and Tanzania. Water Aid is, is uh, uh, planning to get involved in a similar capacity in Zambia. Um, however, we still have to do a bit more with regards to that. There's a lot of, of activities that are facilitated directly by the GTFCC, the Secretariat, with the WHO Cholera team and with consultancy contracts. At the moment, I think we have six or seven consultants under WHO contracts um, in, in, in the countries. And that was it. Thank you very much. <laughs>